Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, May 9th meeting of the regularly scheduled meeting of the Wareham Public School Committee. Um, tonight, uh, the, the meeting is being recorded by WCTV um, video wise, and Michelle Ruiz is recording it, making an audio, an audio copy as well. Uh, if anyone else is recording the, the meeting, uh, please let me know. Um, tonight, tonight we have our special guests here, the, the Wareham Middle School Chorus. <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much for coming. Uh, before we proceed though, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance and if they could just lead us, that'd be great.
good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so tonight we have um, another special special item uh, on the agenda. We're going to recognize uh, staff for some service awards for service anniversaries and some retirements. Um, so we're going to just take to the um, to the front here. Mr. Palladino, could you please come down to the front? Okay, we're going to uh, talk about the high school for a minute. Uh, when Ms. Ruiz sent this email, I, I was kind of in shock when I thought what these four people have met to Wayham High School. For so many years, this is a tremendous loss, which uh, they leave huge, huge shoes to fill. So we'll go in order uh, with Colleen Kirby. Colleen, could you come on up? Because I know you love the spotlight, so please come right up. <laughs> if you know Colleen, that couldn't be any further from the truth. Um, I have three pages of observation, but I've been told to cull it down to less than one paragraph, so I'll try and be brief. Um, so Colleen ended her career the same way she started her career, with integrity and dedication to her students. She has, been work, she has worked in education for over 40 years. You almost, you almost caught up with Frankie. <laughs> Eight years in a private school, 32 years in Wareham High School, all while commuting from Rhode Island. She started out as an ESL teacher for the district and then became a French teacher. She went back to being a part-time ESL teacher until about nine years ago when we needed her full-time to teach French. I had the pleasure of being her neighbor in room 224 uh, for three years as the assistant principal. Colleen would do some unbelievable things in the classroom, but my favorite was when she got the kids to sing in French, and it was always an awesome learning environment. Colleen would plan for weeks ahead of time if I didn't send out an early release schedule, a picture schedule, at least a month in advance, and you know it's true, Colleen, <laughs> I would get an email from her asking, what is the order, what's the schedule, and she really kept me on my toes, and trust me, I, I needed that. Ironically, this year, uh, I didn't get the email because she's retired about one of final exams. Uh, Colleen was instrumental in the uh, proofreader of our NIAS report. She served as a mentor. She was our go-to person for people to observe. Um, she's just an unbelievable educator. Um, she's missed every single day. She came back and helped us this week with IB exams and uh, just a, a wonderful, wonderful educator. Uh, will never be replaced, but is truly missed and had a huge impact on our students. So Colleen, thank you for all of your 32 years of service to the Wareham Public School students. Next up is Ellen Braylod. The lights are going on and off for you, Ellen. I, I wish I could take credit for that. But uh, Ellen is affectionately known as Noni B. Noni <laughs> 
No, Ellen, uh, as, as you can see uh, from the agenda, has taught for, uh, has been a paraprofessional. I, I say taught because someone once said to me, having her in the classroom is like having another teacher in the classroom. And uh, that, that couldn't be, uh, it is, that is the truth. Uh, it is, uh, we're blessed to have her. She worked for over 30 years, took some time off to raise her children, came back and retired and then like came back a week later as a sub paraprofessional. She works the after school program. Uh, she just truly cares about kids and loves the profession. And uh, she, as I mentioned, she works the after school program now. Almost every day I get a chance to see her. She was always my go-to person uh, as a para, and I've known her a long time because she started in mine with my, with my wife, and I've known her a very long time, and uh, I can honestly say uh, you also are, are truly missed, and, uh, but I'm glad we got you back as a sub, so keep coming in whenever you want. All right, and thank you for all of your years and dedication to the Wareham Public Schools. Jackie Schultz couldn't be here, uh, unfortunately, due to a death in her family, um, but she really wanted to be here. Jackie uh, worked in the Wareham High School for uh, almost 34 years. She had held down the special education office for many years. Um, she worked with many different folks, school psychologists, team chair people. She helped to transition our current uh, team chair person and uh, just was a, a lot of fun in the special ed department. Kept things on an even keel, had a great sense of humor, Another one of my go-to people, and uh, unfortunately, again, she couldn't be here, but I wanted to recognize Jackie Schultz for uh, 34 years of service to the Wareham High School. <laughs> Last but not least, and probably will be the toughest one. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wanna first of all thank Pat Tavares. Is Pat here? Because uh, Pat Tavaz brought us a wonderful, wonderful teacher to the Wareham Public Schools uh, back many years ago. And uh, without that connection uh, to Debbie Freitas' longtime uh, best friend, uh, Debbie wouldn't be in the Wareham Public School system. So I want to call up Debbie, T Debbie uh, Freitas, but I want to thank Pat Tavaz at the same time. So Debbie Freitas, come on up. <clears throat> so. For those of you, uh, you know, Debbie's always been affiliated with the high school, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that she actually started at Even Start. Uh, that was her first start in the Wareham Public Schools. Uh, great program, and, and she worked there for a couple of years, then came over to the high school as an ELA teacher. Obviously did a great job there. Escalated up to the uh, ELA department head. Shortly after that, moved into the dean. And, and the interesting piece with the dean, she had so much respect in the school that no one else applied for the dean's position. And, and you know, administrative positions, usually you have people that want to apply. It was just a thing of respect for everyone in the building. They knew that she was the right person for the job and no one else applied and uh, obviously did a great job uh, with that as, as the uh, ELA department had dean. Then she moved up to assistant principal uh, when I took over as principal. That was, uh, I was sitting in Dr. Rabinovich's office and he said, what's the first thing you're gonna do? And I said, I'm going over to find Ms. Freitas and make sure she's gonna stay on board as the assistant principal. And it was the best move I made, first move and best move. Um, when Debbie takes over a project or, or any endeavor, there's never a concern um, that things uh, will be done wrong. Everything was always done right. It was a really a nice feeling to have to know that if she was doing something, it was gonna be done right, there weren't gonna be any issues, and you could focus on another issue. <clears throat> she ran more than 10 trips abroad and most recently, recently was involved in this year's Washington trip. Uh, she was very involved in the eighth grade and the uh, upperclassmen dual enrollment programs, our AP enrichment over the years, all of the new courses we brought in, uh, all of the hires, lights are going off you too, Debbie. All of the hires, uh, instrumental, and uh, pretty much created the portfolio exit interview system, which is now online, our advisory period, which has been instrumental in students creating relationships, 
and us being able to connect with students. Uh, she was actively involved uh, in the NEASC, not just the visit, but the follow-ups. Um, beyond that, she works extremely hard day and night. Um, she's online answering emails. It's not unusual for me to get an email at midnight on a school night and then to see her back in school the next morning at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock. Uh, I don't know when she sleeps. She's the heart and soul of Wareham High School. Obviously, she'll be missed. She leaves huge, huge shoes to fill. Fortunately, she'll only be a phone call away. Uh, Debbie, will miss you. Thank you for all of your years of service. I believe I added it up, and it's uh, almost 28 years of service to the Wareham Public Schools, but obviously the bulk of time at Wareham High School. So thank you for everything. You will be missed, but we still have you for another month and a half. Good evening, I'm Tracy Couture, Principal of Wareham Middle School. I have three staff members to recognize tonight, three retirees from Wareham Middle School. My first retiree is Mrs. Judith Silver. She started working at Wareham Public Schools as a bus driver in 1987. She then became a custodian and quickly became a head custodian in 1992 at Wareham Middle School. Judy was a hard worker and always did her best to make sure our school was looking its best. Her dedication to our students and staff was seen throughout the school. She was always a team player and did whatever was needed to make the best educational environment for all. We congratulate her and wish her the best in her retirement. My next retiree at Wareham Middle School is Mrs. Patricia Miller. She worked for Wareham Public Schools since 2005. She began her career at John W. Dekas Elementary School. She was transferred to Wareham Middle School along with the other fifth grade teachers a few years ago. For the last couple of years before retirement, she taught in grade six. Patty was always looking for ways to implement and expose her students to a rigorous curricula. Every year, she brought the Freedom Trail Foundation scholars to our school for a presentation. This was a lively and educational experience. Mrs. Miller also instituted Genius Hour for students to use their critical thinking skills and research topics that involved STEM. Her dedication to our students, our school, and our district were always evident. We will miss her, and we wish her well in her retirement. We also have Mrs. Karen Landry retiring. I'm not gonna invite her up yet because I know it's going to be very uncomfortable for her, so she'll come up in a minute. Mrs. Landry has worked for Wareham Public Schools since 1983. Yes, that's 36 years. <laughs> she began her career at the old intermediate school, now known as the Multi-Service Center, as a seventh grade teacher. But she really wanted to be an elementary school teacher. She was moved to sixth grade at John W. Dekas Elementary. She only survived as an elementary teacher for a year. <laughs> After that year, she was transferred with the other sixth grade teachers to Wareham Middle School. She finally found her home, and it was as a middle school teacher. She remained in sixth grade until a few years ago when we needed an experienced math teacher in grade five. I met Karen on my first day at Wareham. She was quickly, sorry. She quickly became one of the, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> she quickly became my mentor. Mrs. Landry was doing inquiry-based STEM lessons before we even knew what the name was. <laughs> she always had students performing hands-on, project-based math lessons. I fondly remember having students creating dust bubbles and trying to measure the circumference and radius in her classroom. <laughs> Throughout the years, she has implemented numerous math curricula with many different math programs. Karen's always embraced the change, which most teachers don't like change. She not only embraced the change, I witnessed her make every program work for her students. She molded the programs to meet the needs of the students she had in front of her. As we entered the technology age and we handed every student a Chromebook, she was the first math teacher to figure out how to make math, how to make math on computers work for her students and really create an individualized program for each student. As you can tell, Mrs. Karen Landry is an exemplary teacher that will not and cannot be replaced. I'm not sure how I will function without her. I'm not sure how I will. Teacher, friend, colleague, and mentor, congratulations. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joan Siemens. I'm the principal of the Minot Forest School. So I have three um, staff members that I'll be talking about this evening. The first one is not here, Mr. Bruce Denson. He has been working in um, Wareham for 30 years, and that's why he's being recognized this evening. He's been a custodian, custodian at Minot his whole career. He was a regular custodian. He then moved to lead custodian. And then finally, when we had some head custodians retired, he became head custodian at Minot Forest, the old building on Minot Ave. And now he's the head custodian here for Minot here at the middle school. And we look forward to moving forward as well. Bruce is great at problem solving. If there's something going wrong in the building, he puts his knowledge to it, and he can fix about just about anything. So I'd like to congratulate him for his 30 years in Wareham. Gianna St. Pierre, may you come down, please? <laughs> Janice is being recognized because she has retired from the Wareham Public Schools as an elementary school nurse, and boy, we miss her. She has been a nurse for, a school nurse for 28 years. She has done a variety of schools. She started doing Minot and Hammond, then she did Minot, and then she did the East Cooperative School. She went to the Minot when we came to the middle school. One of the, a uh, couple of the few accomplishments that she's proud of is bringing the fluoride program to the students at Minot Forest, and also for bringing mobile dentist. The, that was amazing, and just having dental work for our students who couldn't afford it or maybe didn't have dental insurance was amazing in itself. She was always there as a shoulder for staff if they had questions. And as I said, we, you are really missed and your shoes have been hard to fill. And when she thought she was retiring, I said, no, I need you to stay on a little bit more. And she did for us, so thank you for that. So we hope you are really enjoying retirement. Mrs. Sally Snyder, please. <laughs> S 
Sally is being recognized this evening because she'll be retiring at the end of this school year. She's taught several age bands during her career. She started out in nursery school. It seems like a lot of our staff members do that back in 1981. She's also worked in various states. So she taught in New Hampshire for grade six. She taught grade six and seven in Virginia. She came back to Massachusetts in 96 and taught grade four in Marshfield. And then in 1998, we were very fortunate to get Sally here in Wareham, where she taught grade six. She taught ELA, social studies, grade seven humanities, um, the Humanities Academy for World History. Her students did some amazing projects. So if you go upstairs in the middle school, you can see the ceiling tiles that her students painted. She did an archeological dig with her students and that was done with Dr. Stedman. Her students did a drama program last year. But one of the things I loved about getting to know Sally this year was her love for bulletin boards. So they were always very interesting, very creative. Uh, she told me right at the beginning of the year she loves doing them and she claimed one in the hallway and every month had, had something different. <laughs> That's true, all of them. And the grade four teachers were very grateful for that. She loves creating things, um, especially painting folk art. Sally, it's been my pleasure getting to know you this year. I'm sorry I only have one year with you, but I wish you well in your retirement of 38 years. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bethany Chandler, principal of DECUS. Tonight, I will be here honoring eight staff members for DECUS, so I'll be here for a little while. Very excited. I'm going to begin with Mrs. Ann Ames. Please come on up. Well, Miss Ann Ames, I know her on a personal level and now a professional level, and it has been an honor to work with Miss Ames this year. Uh, she has such a great sense of humor all day, every day. She brings such life to Deca School. Uh, Miss Fillion helped me out with the past of Ann Ames. <laughs> She said, Wareham is so lucky to have Mrs. Ames as an employee. She is a hard worker and she keeps everyone laughing. Miss Ames began as a parent volunteer when her own boys were younger. I did not know that. She first started working in Wareham Public Schools as a substitute for about four years. She liked it so much she joined us full time and began as a paraprofessional at Minot. She began then for 11 years working as a preschool teacher with Miss Denise Tobin, who I see in the audience tonight. Thank you for being here, Denise, for the Learning Center program. She, uh, <laughs> she works as our early childhood center, and it's evident that she loves her students. She's been with them at Hammond, East, Minot, and now Decus, four schools. She has developed a love for children and works so well with them. She has developed um, lasting relationships with many of her students and their families, and she's touched so many lives. Over the years, she has worked with children ages from three years old to 10 years old. Many staff, she's been in four schools and has changed countless number of diapers. <laughs> Thank you for everything, Anne. We truly appreciate you and your 20 years. We hope for another 20 years out of you. <laughs>
Miss Owen's not here tonight. Um, Secretary Miss Owen is serving 20 years. Oh, excuse me. They always said I had a loud mouth. Okay, is this better, Steve? No, that's fine. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, um, Miss Owen's not with us tonight. She's at the Zaitarian, but I know she'll be watching later. Um, Helene Owen has served as a secretary here in the, the district for 20 years. She's worked at Hammond School, the Cooperative School, the Middle School, and now at Dicus. Versatile is her middle name. In addition to serving as the president of the Secretary's Union, Helene's responsibilities include organizing student transportation, power school log entries, reporting to the state, collecting and reporting attendance, and a multitude of other responsibilities. Helene is also an excellent cook. She has taught me the importance of putting in real ingredients into everything I make, nothing artificial. <laughs> and actually, nothing artificial speaks to who Helene is. She works hard, speaks her mind, and is really true to her character. She loves her work, camping, cooking, her family, including her beautiful grandson. Thank you, Helene. If you are hearing me from the Zaitarian, thank you for all you do every day. My next 20-year recipient is Mr. Don DeVoe. I don't believe Don is here. Don has served 20 years both at Wareham Middle School and Dicus. He's a dedicated member of our school community who sings elementary classics with a spin. Mr. DeVoe enjoys changing the lyrics with the students to provide them an opportunity to be lyrically creative. When speaking with his colleagues at Dicus about Don, they shared with me that he writes music all the time, something I did not know. As a matter of fact, a while back, he received a message from a University of Rhode Island student who found one of his compositions in a desk. The, child, the student asked for him if he could play that composition. Not only can his music be found in interesting places, but Don can be found in interesting places too. You may found him at youth soccer games, coaching, or maybe countries in Europe. As I hear, he likes to travel with his family. But one thing is for sure, I can always count on him on the sidewalks of Deacon School as a devout bus dismisser, something I count on every day to get all my little ones home. Thank you, Don, for your service here at Wareham. We appreciate your commitment. If I could have Carrie Snyder come up. <laughs> Carrie's also been here for 20 years. It's incredible. <laughs> Carrie has been both at Minot and Dicus. Uh, she has taught multiple elementary grades. She received her under degree, um, she's received her undergraduate degree at Fordham University, where she was president of the Fine Arts Council. She received her master's degree at Rhode Island College. Her teaching teammate and friend, Mrs. Burke, describes Carrie as a rock who is exceptionally smart and extremely creative. I have firsthand seen her calm and caring demeanor with students, staff, and families when they are in need. She has also a wickedly sharp sense of humor, unbeatable at online Scrabble, maintains a religious six-day week gym schedule, and is a fantastic consult for all things nutrition and literature, especially the Victorian era, authors of Harry Potter. She's a longtime rescue dog mama, as Miss Burke says. And her summers, and I'm a little, I don't know about this, and I don't know. Her summers consist of being president of the Wareham Educators Silver Shell Beach Relaxation Committee. <laughs> a committee I don't know about, but I'd like to be a part of. Um, Carrie makes a mean meat pie that she serves during her holiday open houses, and even to me, thank you. And I just want to say thank you, Carrie, for everything you do every day. And yet I have another 20-year uh, recipient is Miss Spinard. Miss Spinard, would you come on up? Okay. 
Well, Miss Bernard and I have known each other for a very long time as well. She was two years ahead of me in school. <laughs> I learned a lot from her then, too. Miss um, <laughs> Bernard uh, was a graduate of Northeastern University, where she majored in social work, which is something I did not know about you, um, with a specialization in special education. She received her master's degree in education from UMass Boston and a certificate of advanced graduate studies from the University of New England in Literacy. Ms. Bernard was a member of the rowing team while at Northeastern and just last year participated in the head of the Charles Rowing Race. Impressive. Ms. Bernard was born and raised in Wareham and she said that teaching in Wareham has allowed her to give back to the community where she grew up. Ms. Bernard began her teaching career 20 years ago, first as a student teacher uh, in third grade and then second grade for seven years. She feels that teaching in Wareham has made her a better teacher. Uh, Ms. Bernard is very nurturing. She has children, many children of her own, but she cares for her own children in her classroom too. Uh, she treats her students as if they are her own. Uh, just recently, an example of that is we had picture day and one little girl was crying because she wasn't wearing the right outfit, which I didn't know. And later on, I go to her class, and the little girl has this beautiful outfit on. And she said, well, Miss Bernard picked it out for me. Well, I said, how did we? But Miss Bernard went out during her lunch break to J.C. Penney and bought this little girl a new outfit, a new sweater, and a headband to match, and made that little girl's day. So that's just the type of teacher Miss Bernard is. And we appreciate all she does. So, Ms. Spinard, thank you for your many years of service to the Wareham Public Schools. telling the audience I'm, I'm getting there. I've got a few more speeches. This is fun though. <laughs> All right, I'll just go through the whole staff. No, I won't, I promise. Um, next, I'm going to go through the retirees. Uh, Miss Nelson, I don't think, believe Miss Nelson's with us tonight, um, but I will read on her behalf. Miss Nelson will be retiring from the Wareham Public Schools after many years of service. I first met Ms. Nelson when I was a substitute teacher at Decus in the A Corridor, where she was teamed with Mr. Roach, who's in the audience tonight. I was ex extremely impressed with her organization and structure. She had the famous Miss Nelson is Missing by Harry G. Allard in the corner, which is a book she had on display. Her room was a place I just wanted to teach in. If you were a mother of any student in Ms. Nelson's class, you were treated to a very famous annual Mother's Day tea an evening where students serve their mothers with desserts and tea while listening to loving sentiments from their children. Invited every year was Miss Nelson's own mother. Seeing Miss Nelson's mom there each year reflected the love Miss Nelson had for her own family as well as her students. Thank you, Patty, for your dedication and service to students of Wareham. Miss Nelson, you certainly will be missed. And we, can we see Cindy Travers up here celebrating 30 years and retirement tonight? <laughs> Miss Travers. Miss Travers is like my roommate. She's right next door in B2. I get to watch Miss Travers teach every day, and it's such a joy. She has to be one of the most calm, structured, easygoing teachers you could ever want to meet. Um, it's, just, it's just a pleasure to see her work every day. She served in Wareham Public Schools for 30 years and worked in education for over 40 years. Ms. Travers majored in elementary education, hails from the Westfield State College. She began her teaching career in a cushion it when she was a sixth grade science teacher. <laughs> and social studies, she taught ELL classes and worked as a school librarian. Did not know that. 30 years ago, when Ms. Travers arrived at Wareham Public School, she taught reading recovery with Ms. Donahue. Ms. Donahue was my first grade teacher. 
How'd you know that? It's a while back, Ms. Travers. Ms. Travers has served throughout the years at East Elementary, Hammond Elementary, Minot Forest Elementary, and John W. Deacus School. And now we are fortunate to have her as a kindergarten teacher with us. When asked about her favorite funny story from teaching at Wareham Public Schools, Ms. Travers shared the following. <laughs> I bet she's got a lot more funny stories than this one, but I'm going to read this one anyway, Ms. Travers. When I first started teaching kindergarten, we were constantly talking with students about the importance of not running in the halls. One day in the hall, this little girl came flying by me, and I called for her to come back and talk to me. I asked the little girl, why are you running so fast in the hall? And she replied, oh, gosh, Ms. Travers, it's my shoe's fault. They are running shoes. <laughs> I bet Ms. Travers has that story and many more, but thank you so much, Cindy, for your service. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Mr. Santos. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> you. This is like the price is right. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Santos is with us tonight, not to retire. No, but just to celebrate 50 years of working at Wareham Public Schools. This district has fortunate enough to be blessed with Mr. Santos for 50 years as a custodian. He began his senior year in high school. He loves our school. Along with the staff, he takes great pride in keeping our school clean and safe for our students to work, eat, and play in. Along with loving Deacus School, he loves the students who temporarily reside there. He dresses up as Santa Claus, talks to them every day, wears different costumes. He's not a custodian. He is part of Deacus. His love for children spans from Deacus to his own home. He's taken great joy in building play structures for his grandchildren, including handmade wooden trains. And whether it's taking care of Deacus, dressing up, building structures, watching a race, hunting or fishing, Frank Santos makes the most out of all of it. Because that is who he is. He's dedicated, caring, and joyful. It's like a country song that you listen to every day. <laughs> So thank you for all you do every day, Frank. We couldn't do it without you. The school looks beautiful, and we appreciate you. So congratulations, Mr. Santos. Now school committee's over for the evening. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just be kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate it, staff. Next up is, uh, I'm Jamie Andrews. I don't want to say what I'm in charge of just because everyone will know what I actually do for the public schools. 
But um, I'd like to recognize uh, two people tonight, one that's retired and one that's still currently working with me. Uh, Vanessa Coles is my secretary. Um, she couldn't be here tonight due to a prior engagement. But um, speaking on Vanessa, she's worked in the district for 30 years, starting off as a bus driver. And then now she's been my secretary in, for the last three years. And it's like saying she's my right hand. Most of the time, she's my left. I think I'm there for uh, mostly support staff for her. Um, but I wouldn't be able to do anything without transportation without her. So hopefully she lasts as long as transportation does. Because without her, I don't think we'd, we wouldn't get the buses out of the yard. So wherever you are, Vanessa, thank you. We appreciate you, and we'll see you soon. And my retiree is Richard Souza. Come on up, Rich. Richie drove for Wayham for just about eight years. I've only worked with Richie for the last two and a half. So um, I didn't know much about Richie coming in. We didn't really talk much. But then the last, probably last six months before he retired, I actually got to know Richie. He's actually a pretty good dude. <laughs> so, so I wish we had actually talked more. And believe me, if I can hopefully persuade you to come out of retirement and come drive for me, I will definitely try that. We need more men at the yard because we're running very thin. So Richie, thank you for your service. I appreciate everything you did, buddy. I'm Melissa Faye, Director of Student Services for Wareham, and I'm here um, to speak on behalf of one of our retirees this year, Ro Lindsay. Ro could not be here this evening, but I really wanted to take an opportunity to um, say in the brief time that I worked with her what she meant to me, what she means to um, this district, and what she means to all of the people that we work with in the community. Um, when I came on board in Wareham, Ro was like the encyclopedia of everything that I needed to know to um, get my job done every day. Um, still, eight months after she retired, um, I will still have directors, um, directors, secretaries, um, and different people that we work with at different collaboratives and schools ask me how she is, tell me how much they miss her every day. So she made a big impact on our department. Um, she was started here in 2003, so she gave us 15 years of service as the secretary for the um, student service department. We miss her. I still pick up the phone and call her when I need something. <laughs> and, um, and again, if I could get her to come back, I certainly would. We miss her very much. And thank you so much for your service, Ro. Just sit here. Um, I don't. I just don't know quite how to tell you about Michelle Ruiz. She graduated from Wareham High School, and she was the salutatorium of her class. So congratulations, Michelle. She graduated from Bryant College, and when I read the job description, because I went back in your file to check this out and in the job description it said must have a quick grasp of details and organizes data if you know michelle that fits her to a t she's so organized which if any of you know me i desperately need she keeps me on track and she's worked with seven superintendents they're Six of them are gone, but Michelle's still here. So uh, she's kind, she's knowledgeable, considerate, competent. I could go on and on. 
I'm sure that on a daily basis, she shakes her head with amazement, but she comes back every day. And I know without any doubt that Wareham is so fortunate and blessed to have Michelle working in our district. She served us for 40 years, and I hope in another 10, she'll get the 50. Our final person wasn't able to be here tonight. It's Pam Hall. Pam is retired. She was one of our tech. I have to sit back so Steve doesn't come up. Yeah. Um, she was one of our tech people. She was at DECUS. She did a wonderful job. She's calm. She's served our students well. And her husband retired, um, I think, last year. And they have motorcycles, and they like to ride. And so he kept after her to please retire, and she finally did. So every so often, you can see her out riding on her motorcycle, and it's a great thing, but we sadly miss her. So thank you, Pam, for all your years. And that completes our um, recognition night, and we would have a few minutes break, and then we'll readjourn the meeting. So thank you all for coming, and congratulations. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope you got a chance to watch that. Um, one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, we're moving on to the regular agenda. Before I move on, let me just uh, make it announce it, or let you guys know, um, Mrs. Spear couldn't make it tonight. She's, um, she, she's sick, she's feeling better, but she just felt it best that she didn't, didn't come tonight, and I know she would have loved to have been here. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I kind of jumped around a bit, but um, I'm, uh, today, today's um, meet, quote, quote of the meeting, I'm gonna say, is from Maya Angelou. I'm gonna say, the best candy shop, the best candy shop a child can be left alone in is the library. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, public comment. Is there anyone here that uh, would like to speak before the committee? Seeing none. Moving on. Good news. Anyone have good news? Yes. Joyce? Um, well, I just want to thank you, um, you or Dr. Shaberhood, whoever invited the middle school um, chorus to perform. They did a really great job. I'm sorry that I didn't get to say that while they were here. That was one of my favorite songs, and they did a really great job. So. Thank you to them. Um, I also, I was remiss last meeting and um, not thanking you. I, I try to thank the community, um, members of the community who step up and help the schools. And a few weeks ago, um, the Salerno family uh, hosted a pancake breakfast the same day as the Easter egg hunt and onset. And the proceeds went to our Best Buddies program uh, in Wareham. So I just wanted to say a thank you to them. They do that year after year after year. And they're big supporters um, of that program and others at the high school. And I also wanted to say congrats to the uh, PTA for running another great fun run fundraiser. Um, it looks like everybody has a really great time. And I was told that the middle school participated this year too, so that's great news. So thank you to the PTA for that. That's it, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rossi. I just wanted to remind everybody that tonight, um, opening night for the high school's performance of Little Shop of Horrors, and they are running through Mother's Day with a special brunch on Mother's Day. I know a lot of the kids that are involved in the drama program, my son was involved in the program in the fall, and they actually they do an amazing job, and they put on a great show, so hopefully everybody will try to get out in the next few days and, and support the drama club at the high school. Anyone else with good news? Go ahead, Dr. Shavard. Okay. Um, I would just like to say that on May 20th, at 3 o'clock, 
Our track team will be honored by the MIAA for helping with the unified track for their sportsmanship awards. So thank you to both our unified track and our regular track team. This is quite an honor. So congratulations. Thank you. And um, I'll, I'll add to the good news. Um, I was just to mention uh, to Ms. Bakayaki, so we had to do some rearranging because the, um, they were supposed to go a little later, the, the chorus, but they, I guess a lot of them had tickets to go see Little Shop of Horrors, oh, okay. so we bumped them forward. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and they had to run out to go see it. So oh, I mean, okay. I thought it was great. I mean, the first second they opened their mouths, it was like, wow, that was mm -hmm. really good. Um, then, but those guys had the best seats in the house. I just saw their backs. <laughs> um, also, I think you and I attended the art show in, yes. at, the, at the high school. That yep. was really something. I didn't first time I went. I didn't know what to expect. That was it a lot of art. It always is. Yeah, it's always yeah. great. And um, unfortunately, uh, student rep isn't here tonight. But but she had an entry in there as oh, well. Oh, we did. We saw her. Yeah, her I did. Entry, yeah. yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, later on, we'll discuss the day on the hill, but uh, Ms. Rossi and I went, and uh, actually Mr. Sweat drove for us, uh, the students, to um, the day on the hill. Um, and, and just just thought I'd mention, I, 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 when we got back from that day on the hill, I went and toured the, um, the, the school bus garage, which I'd never done before, and you know, saw how things were working over there, met some mechanics, and got to, got to learn about buses. <laughs> so, um, anyone else? That's good, more good news? All right. Uh, report of the student, the student representative. Uh, unfortunately, she's not here tonight. Um, next is uh, approval of student handbooks, 2019 and not 2000. Meeting minutes. Oh, sorry, you're right. <laughs> uh, meeting minutes, April 25th, uh, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Any discussion? Um, I just had a couple of things. Um, just just under the second paragraph, um, it was uh, it says recording secretary in WCTV period. He then led the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, meaning meaning me. I, I didn't lead the Pledge of Allegiance. That was actually Chamari. I don't know his last name, but we had a student do it. But we, we can get that information. Um, and uh, also Ch Chamari, yeah. Um, and, 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 that, and that's it, actually. Um, if, if anyone doesn't mind, uh, I'd like to amend with those changes. I didn't get a second. Did somebody get a second? I'll second it. Are you looking for a motion to approve with the changes? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so moved. Right. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Passes 4-0-0. <clears throat> Uh, now, um, approval of student handbooks 2019 to 2020, starting with the elementary school. Schools. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Is there anyone that needed a paper copy or likes to write notes? Because I brought a copy with me if you needed it. If not, we'll move I'll along. Would like one? Sure. Thanks. Thank you. And oh, by the way, uh, while you're getting ready, I know Ms. Ruiz doesn't want me to say this, but she can print them for you. She does a really good job. We got this whole big. Yeah. <laughs> Try doing that in your own printer. <laughs> so Mrs. Chandler and I will just go through some of the proposed changes that we're making for the elementary handbook for the 2019-2020 school year. So we gave you a sheet that highlights um, the changes that we have. So some of these are just very minor and housekeeping items. Um, page two, elementary PTA is now the Wareham PTA. We combine with middle and um, the high school. We also, um, under the SSC, which is the Student Support Council, we used to have a reading interventionist as one of the members um, that I don't have that position and that was just removed. Um, on page eight, we just added the word excused under absences, just to clarify. Page 11, we looked at um, adding social worker and removed psychologists since we have, 
have, excuse me, have social workers now. Um, we just edited that out. Page 13, we removed the word library books because we don't have operating libraries right now. So we took that out and we added in Chromebooks into that particular section under care of books and equipment. On page 16, this is a discussion that we had at us, um, school council, and the school, both school councils have gone through the handbook, we talked about it, we made changes, we brought the changes back to them. And we wanted to have, instead of a student code of conduct, conduct we wanted to have a school code of conduct. And in the following page, we added another section there as well. So that's why we changed the name of it. Um, on page 17, because we called it a school code, we wanted to add in a paragraph asking parents and guardians and visitors to follow school ro rules of being respectful, responsible, safe, and kind, which are the words that both schools abide by um, at school or on school-sponsored events. So that was the discussion that came directly from our school council. On page 18 and 19, um, suggestions from parents were to add the word vaping to those sentences. Again, just a minor change. On page 26, it was more of a housekeeping item where we took the bus um, variance paragraph and just moved it right underneath transportation. It was after um, the bus conduct. So just a minor change there. If you look at page 27, we added a few things to bus conduct reports. So on the first misconduct, um, we added that the student is warned that suspension from the bus will occur upon future infractions. Um, we take our bus reports from our drivers very seriously. We're working on improving student behavior <coughs> and we're holding students accountable. Second misconduct, we added that the student may be issued a one-day suspension. Mrs. Chandler and I talked about this in our councils, and we also have to take um, the age of the students in consideration, so that's why we say may be used. And then the, after the fifth misconduct, um, we still have, can be removed for 10 to 20 days, or it could be for the remainder of the school year, depending on what the infraction is. So we wanted to add those words as well. If you look at page 32, it was really a formatting issue only on this particular page. Paragraphs H, I, and J were kind of squished together, so um, we separated those out. On page 34, we just updated policies. So the harassment policy was updated to the um, discriminatory harassment. If you, and then when you do formatting and changes, it changes every single time. So after I deleted the uh, policies and updated them, then the page numberings change and I couldn't get it back. So that's why I made note in your little thing here that after page 39, it started to renumber itself. So going to page seven now, that was an updated policy. It used to be internet safety. It's now empowered digital use. If you look at page 14, under school supplies, we added in the words damaged Chromebooks. We remove the classroom directory section. If you look over on, not that we won't do that, but it, it's something we didn't want to have in the handbook because it's not a guarantee. On page 15, under desk closets and lockers, we added the word or designee because we have deans in our schools, so we wanted to make sure that if the principal wasn't available and it was a matter of importance that we had someone in our place as well, or if the assistant principal was in a meeting. On page 16, under personal items, we added cell phones. And lastly, on page 21, we just updated the contact list for the 1920 school year. And at a, um, one of the parents on the school council had suggested that we add in the email addresses of school committee members so families would know how to get in touch with you if they needed to. At this point, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> Ms. Rossi? So on um, section 13 where you said removed words library books at Minot, does that mean that the Minot children have no access to the library at the middle school where that would be under that cover? Or do they have no access to that library at all? Um, it's not used as a library at all. It's used as a maker space now and a reading nook. So we do utilize the space. 
Um, we do have books in there that the teachers go in and they take the books and they bring them to the classrooms for use and then they level libraries and so we are using it for instruction purposes but we don't have students go take books out like we used to. And okay and on um, page 27 when you made mention of um, the punishment depending on the age of the child, why is that relevant? If a child is conducting misconduct, it shouldn't matter the age of the child, in, in my opinion. Um, if it's a kindergarten child yes. versus a fourth grader, it, there could be a difference when we're trying to teach children um, right or wrong. Yeah, it's developmentally appropriate. A five-year-old doesn't have the same skill set as a nine-year-old. So on more than one infraction, they wouldn't, the punishment wouldn't be the same if it's repetitive behavior? It could be. We just w use the word may because it, we just want to make sure that, as we said, developmentally we're doing the right thing for children. Thank you for clearing that up. Ms. Morgan? And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't the state also look at it differently with the um, kindergarten through grade three? I think that there's some, they, have, um, that they frown on it more than the older children as far as I know because I know we have to report to the superintendent when we're um, suspending a child from grades K to 3. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. And we just have to be sensitive, sensitive to their developmental appropriateness. Right. Yeah. If they understand what words mean, if they understand what they're doing, it's, it's very different from a five-year-old to a nine-year-old. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not to say we won't do it, but it's a teaching practice no matter what age. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Ms. Pacchiaki? I don't actually have a question. I just want to say that I love that you changed it from student to school to encompass everyone who's in the school, whether they're a student, a parent, a visitor. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Um, anyone else? All right. Um, just, I, I have the same concern sort of of uh, Ms. Rossi regarding the library and I know it is what it is. It's just kind of sad we don't have a library anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I throw it out to Ms. Cote as well, just because it's all in the same school. But have you guys noticed any difference, I mean, without having a library? If I can speak to it. My teachers, first of all, each, each of my teachers, unbelievable libraries, they have personal libraries, mm -hmm. hundreds of books in each classroom. Not to mention, we're in a digital age now, we have access to A to Z reading, which encompasses thousands of books that students can um, digitally access every day to their reading level. So libraries virtually are online now for so us you, to so use. So you're, you're not impacted or it's, you've actually think there might be an improvement? Oh, I think that there's an improvement. I mean, we're in a digital era, so knowledge is, is right at our fingertips, and yeah. libraries are now online. Yeah. And it's unbelievable to walk through a classroom on, and seek students on Chromebooks or iPads reading different stories at their level all the time. Some nonfiction, some fiction, um, and then other students with hardcovers in the back table with a teacher. So I don't think that we're impacted without a room because yeah. we have, I have 29 libraries. Okay. In my regular, ed, you know, and special ed lab, we have every classroom is a library, in my opinion. We also yeah. at Minot have what we call the book swap cart. So on our carts, we have lots of books that are free for children to take home and keep. Yeah. Um, if they want to bring a book in and swap it out, they can. But it, um, the the carts are full, so mm -hmm. we tried to take that into consideration, knowing that books in children's hands are, is still really important. So these are the kind of things that we've done in order to help with that. Okay, uh, Ms. Morgan. Do you still have the, um, I believe it was, Ms. Wood was, had like a literacy uh, class that she was teaching. Does she still have that or not? Ms. Wood's a kindergarten teacher now. Oh. Literacy okay. has turned into, well, we have drama. Right, okay. So. Well, tell her congratulations, kindergarten teacher. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I will. Uh, Ms. Rossi? So you, you mentioned that a lot of the reading that the students, that the younger students are doing is online or on Chromebooks or on you know, iPads or Kindles, where so many parents are concerned about screen time um, and using mm -hmm. digital devices and blue light and things like that. Do you feel like that would be something that would be impacted where they wouldn't have uh, a paper book in their hand or do you feel like that's completely not an issue? We still do use paper books. But, um, we're, in, yeah. but we're in a digital era. I mean, 
as an, I, I'm an adult and I'm, my, I'm on the screen five hours a day, it's just our reality. I think so many, if we're going to teach our students to be adults, so many of the adult world, so much of the working world is on screens. It is knowing how to be computer literate. And, and I agree with you there, but there are other people that seem to be conflicted on how much screen time in that age should be or shouldn't be allowed. So that's why I was questioning whether them reading it on a screen as opposed to reading it on a book would be more beneficial or less. And I think the teachers do a good job with their judgment as far as what they have planned for the day. So if they are on the, the Chromebooks because they're doing their math or their ELA, they may be doing silent reading with actual books in their hands. So it's a balance. Okay. I agree with you. Thank you. Ms. Morgan? Uh, just to say I'm a big advocate of having a book in my hand, but I will also want to say that I think there's a difference between reading a book on on the um, computer and doing, say, a video game. And I think that's mm -hmm. the, more of the concern mm -hmm. that doctors and researchers mm -hmm. have, is the video games and the uh, YouTube videos and uh, um, even TV, um, all of that is different than reading actual text on, on computers. Okay. I was just, <laughs> sorry, I just have read other studies that have said just the blue light itself or the type of lighting that is in those devices yeah. is where they were having the issue. So it becomes, you know, which, is, which study is the right study, right. I suppose. Yeah. So. yeah, that's true. I still prefer a regular book. I agree with you. <laughs> and I just wanted to say uh, out of all of the handbooks, I, 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 liked, <laughs> I liked reading this one, you know, the, with the, um, the changes. Mm -hmm. so it was easy for me to track them. It was easy for me to see what was coming and going, and, and I like that. Um, the other ones, you know, you, you can see changes and stuff, but I could really see how this kind of developed, and I, and I, I like that. I appreciate it. Great. And I like the paper copy that Ms. Ruiz made for them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Mm -hmm. right, that's it. Uh, do, do, you want, do you want to vote to approve each one? All right, so uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, middle school's here handbook? So moved. Oh, I'm sorry, elementary. Sorry. Elementary, sorry. Elementary school handbook. So moved for the elementary. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? That passes 4 zero, zero. Thank you, and we thank our school councils for their work as well. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the Rear Hand Middle School. So my handbook as well was um, the changes were made with my school council and also with staff input. Um, dates were changed obviously to 2019-2020 throughout. On page four, we changed interim principal to principal, um, added a new school psychologist, we're waiting to add a team chair. We put in the new school calendar on page five. On page six, um, it used to say a grab-and-go breakfast, and we changed that um, to say that uh, students had 20 minutes to enter the building, visit their lockers, and eat breakfast in homeroom. Um, on page 12, we changed the location of where students arrive if they're coming in early. Um, it's actually uh, door number nine and not the front door, so we put that in. We also made the wording a little bit clearer for attendance and um, what will excuse an absence, and that is a doctor's note, religious holidays, those were in there, but it, one of the parents commented that it wasn't very clear, so we tried to make that a little bit clearer this year. Page 18, we added some information about social media, and we took that from the high school's um, handbook. On page 23, we just updated it a little bit to make sure that um, on field trips it said all school rules are in effect during field trips and the discipline code applies. Same with um, co-curricular and inter intramural activities on page 24, we added that same statement. On page 26, 
It had the state of Massachusetts. We changed that to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and we updated um, the helmet requirement to under 16. It said under 12 before. On page 27, um, we added that cell phones are not permitted to be used during school hours. On page 28, um, cell phones must be turned off and stored until students dismissal. We used to allow cell phones in the classroom um, as handheld devices before we had one-to-one -one Chromebooks, so we just updated that information because it still said that at the teacher's discretion they could have them for projects and internet access. On page 34, we updated our unified arts programs to make sure they were accurate. On 39, the replacement screen actually um, re was reduced for um, Chromebooks, so we changed that amount. On page 44, um, we included um, the social media about uh, photographing or recording any school member um, during the school day and put that in our disciplinary code. And on page 65, it was just, the wording was a little bit unclear um, as to what they were signing, and this was actually, they were signing for the middle school handbook um, for staff, students, and parents, so we just updated that, that language. And that's it. <coughs> Questions? Anyone? <clears throat> wow. No? Come on, Joyce. All right, I take a motion to approve. So moved. A second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Excellent. please. You. Oh. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't vote yet. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 4-0-0. Uh, moving on to the high school. Okay. Okay, so I'm handing out the handbook, obviously is the thicker packet, uh, the one that's three pages, are the changes, I promise you, uh, most of the changes are additions and I'll go through that. So uh, the first one, just procedural, school contact information, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we had a few uh, retirements, transitions, so these are people that have been added. Page six is the district calendar. Page eight was a recommendation from school council to remove the wording in regards to calling the school. 13, we added on page 13, we added designee because in certain circumstances, we need an answer right on the spot and I could be in a meeting in regards to extending time for makeup. We now have a third lunch on page 23 with the eighth graders being added. Uh, under cafeteria, we asked the students are granted permission to leave the cafeteria just so we can have control in the cafeteria. Page 27 under Group D, we added uh, number 13, lewd and lascivious uh, conduct. And then uh, school council uh, recommended that we uh, enhance the clubs by giving a description of all of the clubs that are offered. I just want to let you know and, and thank the folks that were involved in vetting this. We had students from our Student Advisory Council that were involved in this. We had students from student council who were involved and they also attended our site-based management meetings one, uh, two Monday afternoons. Our staff uh, from the staff and student culture, two groups, site-based management reviewed this. As I mentioned, our, our school council as well, I wanna thank all of them uh, for being involved in, uh, in creating a new handbook for next school year, so thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? Ms. Morgan. Yes, don't you have, um, starting July 1st, an assistant principal of special education? Yes, um, that has just been approved, so that will also be added. Okay. Thank just you. Just want to make sure. She, she'll be on there. We're not going <laughs> to. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Bakayoki. So I just want to thank you because I've already had the opportunity to ask Scott lots of questions at, as a member of the school council. So thank you. I know that a lot of work has gone into this. And I want to thank my secretary, Jen, because uh, she really 
took this and, and did a great job with it while we had all kinds of evaluation meetings going on. So thank you to Jen McCarran, now Jen LaFrancois. <laughs> so I do have another question. I'm, I'm sure. sorry that I didn't ask this before, but it didn't occur to me. So last year, around the same time, you, well, you spoke to us about school IDs and students wearing IDs mm -hmm. and how it did create some problems. And, but you agreed to go ahead and they still wear the IDs. Is that in the handbook? Uh, there is language that there is language case. I didn't read it every yes. single page every sure. word but I didn't it's, uh, it's it didn't jump like, out if at you me. look under our discipline it's sections a B C and D it's it's listed in there as well and and uh, yes we're not looking to change that this year okay all right so how do students how do you tell them that they're supposed to wear their ID? I mean, that's made perfectly clear I, to them I, I need like one of those staple buttons because I must say it a thousand times a day yeah okay all right Thank you. I can attest to the fine my sons had to pay for forgetting his ID when well, he didn't I know. have it. <coughs> right, and I know it's been a, been a point of discussion, and so that's why, I, and I'm sorry that I didn't think of it to ask earlier. No worries. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Anyone else? So we have a motion to approve the high school handbook. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Passes four zero zero. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Moving on to the teacher evaluation process. Uh, no, no. District. Uh, oh my God! D sorry, district. <laughs> um, the reflection, the changes that are made in the district handbook really reflect policies, and updating the policies so that, of course, the table of contents have been changed, the rights to equal education on page number one, updated categories, the page 12, student code of conduct, we added the word discriminatory, um, we added the bullying section, and that reflected the school committee policy. On page 25, the harassment policy has been updated to change to discriminatory harassment. We also removed the policy criteria for approval of private school by the Wareham School Committee. The following policies have been updated as voted by the school committee. Alcohol, tobacco, and drug use by students prohibited. Athletic ticket prices, early graduation, network acceptable use changed to empowered digital use, goal statement, home and hospital, movies and films in the classroom, online instruction, courses for students, hearing requested with the school committee. On page 81 and 82, updated the administrative contact list and on page 84, we added the school calendar for the 2019-20 school year. So if there are any questions. Uh, seeing no questions, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? That passes 4-0-0. Now, on to the evaluation process. And I, I, thank, uh, I thank Dr. Schwamm and Dr. Shiva Hood for putting this on. I just, I, I heard we had like 1,800 evaluations last, you know, recently, and I'm like, it'd be nice to know how, how they work. <laughs> well, good evening. Uh, there are a number of people here to answer questions as well. Um, so I'm just going to open it up and then I'll open it up to questions because you received the document pretty quickly about what the evaluation process is. But I'd like to start by explaining that um, the packet includes uh, the first part, which is the contractual Unit A, Appendix F, that was last updated in 2014 and is currently being updated by the evaluation subcommittee. We have an evaluation subcommittee that is held every single year. It's part of our obligation to the system as a whole. Um, so that's, be, we're almost there. We have a couple of more areas that we'd like to discuss and we will get that to the union and they will vote that their recommendation for that particular part of the contract. 
Also attached are all of the forms used for various different um, people in the district, all of the different positions, and the rubrics that are connected with those, which those are measured by. The system itself is connected to a software system called TeachPoint, and that was purchased, I believe, in 2013, 14, I want to say. It was there before I came here. So. And so everything that we do is kept digitally on that system. And there are, all of these forms are connected in that system. And we're able to personalize the forms available to everyone based on their need or their, where they are in their valuation and their position, which is, which is clever. And it makes it clean and quite simple when you're searching for documents. Mm -hmm. There's a process. It's the law. Massachusetts has rules around the evaluation process, and all of this needs to be sent to them and approved. So we're not, it's not an, it's not just, we can't, we're not allowed to not do it. It started um, when the economy crashed, actually, in 2008, and President Obama offered race to the top money all across this country and those that applied for the money. And believe me, I begged them not to in Massachusetts, but we did. And so part of the requirements of receiving that money was that we came up with an evaluation system. The state created a system. They then gave that to the districts. The districts then decided whether or not they would use that system <coughs> or they would modify that system. In Wareham, they had a subcommittee prior to me coming, because this all started in about 2012, they began meeting and assessing all of the different documents and requirements that have been sent by the state and looking at the documents to see if they fit and worked for this community, for their community, and what they needed to accomplish. They made those changes, and those changes were then sent to the state, and the state then would either approve them or say, you can't use that system. They were approved, and we've moved on from that point. And since then, as things change in education, we meet every year, and we update and review <coughs> and look at where we are and what needs to happen. Um, what works for Wareham, and I would argue it's one of the best systems that I've seen, and I've been told from external resources that how we've set it up as a result of the school committee's commitment to our teachers and our students and the support, is that essentially the state has said that we need to evaluate everybody every year. And it has to be various times. If you're a principal or an assistant principal and you have 80 staff members and et cetera, that's on you to get that done. And it becomes arduous and complicated and you cannot give it its due diligence. It, it's just not possible. So we, as the, the high school had a structure in place that worked really well. They had department chairs and they managed their departments, their experts in their field so they know what they're going in to see, not only pedagogically, but also often with their subject area as much as possible. And those people are the ones that go in and collaborate and work with teachers and their students. We created the same process at the middle school, and it has actually started to filter through the, uh, through the elementary schools, where I would say at the Deacus school is probably the less support because it's difficult to hire a subject-specific department chair for an elementary school because they teach all the subjects often. And a teacher can't have five evaluators or four evaluators in their room, right? It, it would just not work. So, however, we're working on structures and systems to put in place that have a better management of the amount of people and the amount of evaluations that need to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the key elements that I think is extremely important is that we created the system so that we could foster collegial conversations, collaborations, professional relationships, coaching opportunities, and ways in which we could 
have people with, uh, with not too many groups of people so that those relationships could become better. And as a result, everything has gotten better. So that's just an overall explanation of the system. Um, I'd like to invite some of you down here. Brian has been on the event. Brian, will you come down at least because as a teacher point of view of the system, I think any questions that you might have of what happens and how it happens, we have the people that are doing that, the job and people who are affected by that job <laughs> um, here to answer your questions. But Brian has been on the evaluation subcommittee since it began and he's stuck with me every year since. Mm -hmm. So anyway, a teacher at the middle school. Anyone? I have a question. Uh, Ms. Backyard? Can you tell me something that you've recently made change to make better? Just, just an example of something that you changed because you thought it would make the process better. You mean within this system? Yes. Well, I, I would mention, good evening, uh, folks. Uh, I would mention the thing that comes to mind is we adopted from the high school. Uh, they had developed a nomenclature of four different labels for questions or comments that would be made after an observation that would make clear to the educator what the intent was. And uh, they are a question, recommendation, suggestion, and expectation. And that, that is something that we adopted throughout the district because it clarified things a great deal. Uh, if you're an educator and you see after a lesson your evaluator asks, why were they working in groups? Those labels tell, in my case, those labels tell me, does that mean I'm curious why they work in groups? Or was it meant as, why were you foolish enough to put these students in groups for this activity? <laughs> and we learned through the process that different people are going to interpret things differently and doing it online, doing it on the web, leaves so much room for misinterpretation and confusion that those labels make very clear not only what is the intent of the question, but what is the import of it as well, it, the degree to which it requires a change in practice. So I think that's been um, something that uh, I believe was the assistant principal uh, of the high school who developed it, and um, we liked it and we adopted it, and now it's used throughout the system. And every time you make a change like that, does it have to be approved by the state? Every change for the most part that we make has to go before the board, before mm -hmm. the WEA. It's, it's, it wouldn't work otherwise. It's actually a good thing. Okay. So it, it allows us all to, to work in a situation that everyone participates equally. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I think it's effective in that way. Which is why this document that we have is a draft, because it's this is part of, well, this is actually part of the Unit A contract. Mm -hmm. So this is an important piece of information. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's why it's in draft, because we're still, we're still changing some of the areas of that document. And how long ago was it that you, how often do you change that? Well, we haven't, not enough. So did you say 2014 was the last time you changed I didn't, it, I was not here when it was created. It was amended in 2014, and I was not part of that conversation. And so it hasn't been amended since mm -mm. then? This is the first time? We, we have made some small changes. I'd say every year or two there are some small changes that reflect the previous year or two's experience. Um, but just recently we went through the document page by page uh, with an effort to update it. There are a lot of... There are, it was necessary to go through the entire document uh, and update it just it, it hadn't really had a hard look for four or five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ms. Rossi. I don't want this to come across as sounding negative, so I'm just gonna put it out there, but I don't know if it's going to come out that way, and if it, if it does, I do apologize. I'm not trying to insult anyone, but do you feel that having a, an, an evaluation by a department chair I understand the need to have a specialized teacher being in each subject. Um, do you find that there is the possibility for interpretation from an outside perspective of any sort of favoritism or any sort of 
we want our department to look good, so we're going to give this as their marks for this evaluation. Not saying that that is happening, but as an outside perspective, having an in-house evaluation as opposed to a, an a unbiased outside person with a, with a specialty in that subject as a coming in as an evaluator, would that make something would that make a difference or do you feel that there is a possibility that it could be perceived as we're going to make our department look good so that these evaluations when submitted to the state look the way that they should? Hi, I'm Mike Murray. I'm a Humanities Department Chair of the High School. Um, I think first of all the, um, the language is very strong in the, the rubric that we use and what we call the indicators. So um, for example, um, if I go in, I, I, I watch a teacher, I'm, I'm writing down um, basically what I see, what happens, you know. Um, but then when I'm going to write the evaluation, I'm, I'm using what's called a claim. Um, the claims, I, I personally like to take them from the rubric themselves. Um, something like, uh, you know, a teacher uses uh, clarity to, um, so that all the students know exactly what to do, you know, uh, the, the use of a rubric, stuff like that, so that everything is, um, is very clear for students about what the assignment is, when it's due, how it'll be graded, et cetera. Um, and it's, it's, it's really not possible to fake that, you know? Um, but on the other side of the coin, though, um, the collegiality aspect of it is actually a, a large component because I'm then observing someone, then I'm, you know, 20 minutes later, I'm going in and, and facing my own class and, and the same challenges, and then coming out and talking to that teacher, you know, we're sharing the same experiences and we're, we're learning from each other. And, and what's interesting in the high school actually this year is that um, we've instituted a um, peer observation um, system <clears throat> where, whereby all the teachers have gone uh, this year four times um, to, to uh, view a peer. Um, anyone who, who's willing to be, to be watched. Um, we, they put a Viking head actually on the, uh, on the door um, and they come in and they, they'll watch them during their prep for 20 minutes and they'll talk afterwards. They fill out a form, they get PDPs at the end of the year. And what's, what's neat about that is it's kind of spreading the wealth, honestly, of um, influence um, that I've enjoyed, you know, other evaluators have enjoyed over the years. We go in, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I'm doing, oh, gee, hundred, couple hundred observations a year. I'm, I'm learning things constantly. We're, so we're, we're allowing teachers to do that too. And I think our evaluation process has actually allowed that to happen where there's much more of a give and take now. Um, no one is freezing up when you walk into the room. Um, when I started here, um, the principal saw me once for about a minute. Well, I do appreciate that. I know that the, the district as a whole has a lot of amazing teachers that go above and beyond. I was just curious as to the difference between a self-evaluation, whereas we're evaluating within our own umbrella, as opposed to what the difference would be with an outside opinion coming in that may see things that we necessarily don't, and if that would be beneficial. We, we do have external evaluators come. We just had the comprehensive district review, which was a massive effort on the part of all of the people that are here and those that couldn't make it tonight to collect every single document in all elements. And they came and they saw nine, they went to 93 classrooms across the district, stayed in them for 20 to 25 minutes. And so, there, so and looked at our process, our evaluate, looked at all of those details. So. We do have that element when it's available to us to come in to do that, or when they make, when they require to come. I don't believe we need it, um, and, and I believe that what we have are highly degreed professionals in a system that really don't need to depend on other people's opinions necessarily about their job. I think they are capable of reflecting and creating their own plans. Um, I think this is, in a way, a gift to everyone in that we have these moments, many of them, that we get to check in and we get to expand and grow and um, become even better by learning from each other. So I think education is an extremely complicated um, endeavor. And to have someone who doesn't really understand all of that coming in might be valuable to a degree if they're looking at the business office or they're looking at processes and procedures. 
but to come in and see a moment in time without understanding all the dynamics of that moment, I'm not sure that would be more, effect you know, I don't think it would be any more effective and maybe less effective than what we do every day. So, yeah, so the, the reason that I'm asking is we have so many people leaving the district and school choicing, um, and so they're, the outside people, some of those parents are feeling the disconnect between our district and their students. So my, my rationale for asking about an outside expert to see where we can improve, to see if somebody can help us see what we may be missing looking at ourselves to help to keep kids in our district when I know we have great teachers and I know we have a lot of passionate educators and staff and um, I'm just curious as, a, as another method to try to help retain people in our district from going to school choice where they may feel that there's a lack in that classroom is my, my reason for thinking that an outside unbiased Special in where you mentioned, you know, having somebody come in that isn't doesn't have that as a specialty, but maybe having someone as that as their specialty come in from the outside or from another district and give using the same rubric and using that as a qualifier to see if there is something that we are missing because we're looking at it from our from the inside to see if that's something that could give somebody insight before they school choice and leave our district. Well, I, I can say that this district offers um, so much more than other, and I've worked in other districts, and I'm familiar with many other districts, but the level of care, the programs, the opportunities, the, the, heart, the heart and the work that happens here, um, it's hard to understand why anybody wouldn't want to come here or choose to come here. I know that many, there, are, there are complications, there are, other, there are other reasons for different you know, purposes. We're all human, it's not perfect every single day, but I have to say that there's nothing like Wareham that I've found out there. And we're, we're applauded every, when we're externally, you know, talking about what we do, conferences, uh, nationally, internationally, people can't believe what we're offering here. They just can't. So I'm not really sure if the reputation prior, if what happened, you know, you hang on to that for a long time. It takes a long time to recover from things that happened a long time ago, or six years ago, seven years ago, eight, ten. I don't know. But it takes time, and I believe it's, we're recovering. So. And I do appreciate, like I said, I know uh, my son has gone through Wareham Public Schools and I have worked in Wareham Public Schools and I have great respect and admiration for all of the work that they do and all of the programs that they offer. And I know that there is a lot of great things. My one concern, again, is the issue that so many people are choosing to leave the district in spite of all of these wonderful things that we have. So there's clearly a disconnect between not necessarily what we're, we're offering and what we're doing and the changes that we're making, but having something like a small thing to change the outside perception or to make it a, so that people can see that we are making an effort. Not that you're not, but it's perception is everything. And if people are in the school and they're experiencing things and they're perceiving things in a certain way and that's prompting them to leave, and we're trying to keep them here because we believe in this district and because we believe in our teachers and because we know it's a great place for students to learn, where do we bridge that gap for those parents that are still choosing to leave? I think, we, I, uh, hold on, are we kind of straying from the evaluation? Well, no, because it's in bringing in the outside evaluation um, process. Mm, and right. Right. Can and I? That's, that's what I was going to say. I'm not sure where your connection is um, with that. But here's what happens. We have school improvement plans. We have leaders that put things in place. We work with the department chairs. We make these goals. We communicate those goals to our staff. And then department chairs, assistant principals, myself, principals within the buildings, we go in and we evaluate. We have conversations with those staff. So an outside evaluator is not going to know what our goals are. Our school improvement plans are presented to you. You have questions. You ask. We develop those with community members and parents. That's part of the evaluation system. So you asked, would an outside evaluator make 
better uh, evaluations of our staff? Absolutely not. They have no idea what we're about or what we're doing. Do they come in and see the best damn teachers they've ever seen? Absolutely. Will outside evaluators see that? They will see that. So I do think maybe you're barking up the wrong tree about why people are leaving for school choice. I don't think it's our teachers or the evaluation system. If I may, mm -hmm. I have a question as well um, for you. Oh. Do you know the percentage of students that leave other districts for school choice? Do I know the actual percentage yeah. off the top of my head? No, but I, one of the main concerns of a lot of people when I was campaigning and talking to parents and trying to figure out one of the things that they were concerned with was you know, why they were leaving. So I'm not saying, like I said, I know we have amazing teachers and I know you're all dedicated and I know, like I said, I'm not trying to come off negative. I'm trying to be more of like the devil's advocate for those parents that are, for whatever their reasons are, choosing to leave and my only question like I said was if an outside evaluation not all of the time but would maybe show us something we might not be seeing was my only question right but what I'm my point is that what I want to get at is that other districts are experiencing this same loss of students we have a system now where we are able to shop around we have charter schools, we have online schools, we have state online schools, we have local online schools. We have a lot of options. So just as you may shop at Stop and Shop one week or some other place, people are trying different things. It's not just Wareham. So I think that if you are looking at the percentage of students that have school choice from other districts and then you're comparing here percentage-wise, and if you're presenting those, those figures, then we can talk about that in a realistic way. But I don't think that you ch you're talking about evaluation and students leaving. And I think it's like two different things. And the idea of um, your, your first point was that we're trying to make our departments look good. I really took offense to that. Because I, my department chairs mm -hmm. at the high school, and I'm sure and every other school in this district, have the utmost integrity. And I will tell you that the all of the observations are evidence-based, as Mr. Murray had very clearly stated. There is a claim and there is evidence. And I wasn't I would saying, give sorry. a student, a, a teacher, or a department chair a needs improvement if I found that there was a reason to give a needs improvement. They do exist. Mm -hmm. We are not trying to make ourselves look good. We are only trying to improve. We're trying to improve our teaching. We're trying to improve engagement. And we're doing that constantly. So I, I, I apologize. I wasn't trying to say that you guys were doing that or that you were trying to make it look good. I was talking about outside perception and the perception of somebody reading an evaluation. If I had had no knowledge of anything and I was a parent, you know, as a parent, and I said, this is an evaluation given by this teacher, and that was the question. My question would be, well, would an outside person look at it differently perception-wise? Not saying that you're not doing a good job, not saying that n your department chairs don't have integrity, never insinuated or meant any of that. I was saying from an outside perspective where we are trying to turn around a reputation that may have had nothing to do with some of the people that are in this room, what else can we do to help that? If it's partially by having, you know, an, a quote unquote unbiased evaluator, that's my only question. If that's going to help us with the We do have an outside evaluation perception. as well. We have a NEASC Thank that you. comes in to the high school. We mm -hmm. are an accredited high school. It is a very, very rigorous process, mm -hmm. uh, just very similar to what the district went through very recently. Mm -hmm. And that is starting uh, next year, in fact. Mm -hmm. And we do have, they, they come in from all over New England. Um, they are trained to look at a particular rubric and standards, uh, many standards, uh, instruction, curriculum, uh, engagement with students, culture, climate, all of those things. And we are going through an outside evaluation beginning again next year. So yes, we are. Dr. Shaverhood? Yes. Well, a couple things. Um, in the state of Massachusetts, I am the only lucky one whose um, evaluation gets to be public. Everyone <laughs> else's evaluation is private and confidential, and never do we show a teacher's evaluation or a principal's or any other employee. Um, the only thing that gets reported would be the ratings, the, over, the final rating, and that goes to the state. 
and you can go and look at, at those numbers. Other than that, it's confidential. So a person in the public would not have access to what is written. Um, secondly, I think, uh, as Dr. Schwamm alluded to, we had gone under the um, DESI review this winter, mm -hmm. and we've been fortunate enough to get the draft copy back. Uh, we had to make some edits and send it back in, so we're expecting the final copy. And I will have to say to you that I am thrilled with the draft copy. I was, I was holding my breath when I got it and thought, oh, do I have a sleepless night or do I read it? And I decided to go ahead and jump and read it, and it was, it was wonderful. Um, and everything that they pointed out, we know and we're working on. And they highlighted some, some wonderful pieces about our district. So we're going to be very excited to get that back and, and to share that with you. And part of it did talk about our evaluation system and the pieces that we have in place. So I think that there's the, the evaluation process is in depth. It's thorough. And I think there's one thing that all of us would say is, our job is to make sure that the person that's in front of the student is the very best person in front of the student. And the way that we've set up this, the evaluation system is a collaborative model. And our job is to work with people to help them be the very best they can be. And um, I think when you look at the number of evaluations and walkthroughs that are done in our district, it certainly mirrors that that's our goal is collaboration. Uh -huh. Ms. Macchiaki? Yes. So I just want to thank Mrs. Freitas for coming up because those, the knee ask, I was hoping that someone was going to bring that up. And I mean, certainly that is a, a complicated, detailed process that they go through, which involves parents. I, as a parent, 10, well, maybe nine years ago, was involved in that process with other parents. It, it, it involves not just teachers, administrators. It involves the whole school community. So we were able to be a part of that. Um, the DESI review, yes, we, I was involved in that as a member of a school council. We were all invited. We went to the meeting. There were parents from every school council there. Um, so and our opinions were welcomed, um, valued. Um, as a school committee, we were invited to meet with the DESI representatives. Um, so I went to that. So there's certainly many opportunities for others uh, to participate in, those, in, those, in that process, which I certainly appreciate. And I can't believe that you have to start the NEASC review again so soon. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, done? OK. Uh, Ms. Morgan? So being a part of um, the evaluation system myself, I just wanted to say that um, Wareham does have a, a much more intense evaluation system um, than the other districts I've been in. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that you have that not all districts have are you have two evaluators. So you have one primary that's looking and going in and doing the observing. And then you have um, the person that uh, usually it's a principal, right, that signs off and that's looks primary. over the evaluation. So you have a second set of eyes that are looking at the evaluation. And I think um, April, that you are on the right track in actually going to the source where uh, the parents and asking them, why have you left? And I'd like to see, um, I know you've said that the surveys have gone out, but I hear that not everyone is receiving them. I'd like to, to see that we are following up and, and actually um, have maybe a committee that looks at these surveys, brings it back to the school committee to let us know what exactly is the parents' reasons for leaving the system. I think that would be really valuable information for us. Can I do one more thing? Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Beckyogi. I just want to say that I don't disagree that, um, that getting to the source of why students are leaving is, is a good idea, um, but I don't think it's related to the evaluation of our staff. Uh, Mr. Palladino, did you yeah, want to say yeah. something? I, I just want to reiterate, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we're losing students' school choice to school choice, yes, but it would cost more money to educate those students if they're back in the district. <clears throat> it's not a golden umbrella 
where they come back and it doesn't cost the district any money. It would cost the district more money to educate because we'd have more students. So it's, it's, there's, there's some you know, loss there or gain, depending on how you look at it. Um, to the point of Ms. Morgan, I, I just want to reiterate that uh, uh, you know, two people dozens of times in the classroom per year, if you were to try and replicate that with an outside source, you're talking millions of dollars that we could be spending on the students in the building. Uh, I think we have a wonderful process. I get calls daily, ask, uh, sorry, weekly about our process. I get calls every month from people that worked in Wareham telling us how great the evaluation system is and they wish they had it in their <coughs> district. Uh, so I think, it's, I, I think the issue is, is uh, definitely not the teaching or the evaluation system. I think the issue as to why um, students are leaving or parents are choosing to have their students leave via school choice uh, doesn't lie in the classroom or within the evaluation system. I have something to say. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so back to the evaluation. <laughs> um, so, so it might have been touched on earlier, but I guess maybe it's Mr. Fitzgerald. Um, what have you seen from you know being a, a, t a teacher um, different than in the past? In the, in, I remember when this like, first started, everything was all about instru instructional leaders. Is it not being done that way anymore? Like, do we have instructional leaders that are performing the evaluations? Do you find do you find added value in it now that it's different? The job, the job titles change, the responsibilities change. One thing that I can say is that for the large part of the lifetime of this current evaluation system, at least one evaluator for most of our educators is somebody who's familiar with their subject, with their curriculum. You do not have a math teacher trying to evaluate a physical education teacher, for example. And uh, we have had an evolution of job titles and responsibilities, as I've said. But one thing that I think has been constant is the idea that you're being evaluated by somebody who knows what is supposed to be happening, who is familiar with our students, with our community, with our schools, with our staff, and with our curriculum. Um, and that is something that uh, these outside people simply aren't. The outside people what? The outside people that Ms. Rossi was speaking about would not be. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, did you have something else? No, and again, I'm, I wasn't looking yeah. to insult the, the wonderful staff and the teachers that we have here. I was, again, my questions were more directing towards outside perception as if we brought someone in as what it could look like as opposed to an internal. Wasn't looking to stir the pot. I know you're all very passionate about what you do, and I appreciate every single one of you for you know all of the effort and outside of the classroom and in the classroom that you do for all of the students. Um, but again, it was, it was more of a outside perception and if that would in fact influence somebody's uh, you know relativity to stay or not stay so I thank you for your clarification I'd like to suggest if you do start to investigate why people are leaving you might want to look at the high number of people choosing to come here as well it's not close to the amount of people leaving but it's doubled or tripled in size in the last few years so it, it's just a curious rather than you know when it, there are people that are choosing to come here yeah, especially and the that's an important numbers. element to this process mm -hmm. right because there are a lot of choices and <laughs> you can go to a lot of different places and people are choosing to come here so that's not a bad thing any further discussion on evaluations thank you very much I appreciate everybody coming up thank you guys so much thank you thank you <clears throat> Moving on to the vote on collective bargaining agreement cafeteria workers. Yes, um, <clears throat> I provide you with a memorandum of agreement that we've gone through just to reiterate the salary which was settled on um, with the cafeteria effective would be one one and we redid the the salary scale um, which was attached and I believe that was two about two percent that the um, cafeteria workers received and that was really based on because of the re um, working of the wage grid there are a few other pieces in here we added personal day may not be taken to extend a vacation unless the request is approved by the superintendent 
uh, we approved longevity in the amount of 15 years, $275. After 20 years, $325. And after 20 years, and after 25 years, $375. So I would ask the committee to please vote to approve the cafeteria contract. It has been approved by the cafeteria workers. Uh, before discussion, can we just have a motion to approve? So moved. I just want to clarify. Is there a second? Second. All right. Now, discussion. It was no. It wasn't discussion. It was you said. In effect, one one or seven it's, one. No, I'm seven. sorry. The salary grid, it was about two percent was the first year, and then it went one one, and it's a three year contract. Okay, I was just asking yeah. for clarification. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, could I just say a couple of things? I just yeah. want to thank the representatives from the cafeteria workers. They were very easy to work with. And I just want to thank our business manager who um, has been working hard to make a lot of the contracts comparable in language and, and it's been very, very helpful. So thank you. Thank you. That's it. Anyone else? No, I wasn't on that one, but, um, but no. I can just imagine that the mm -hmm. business manager did a, a great job there. She she's, did. she's been doing a great job on other negotiations that I mm -hmm. am on. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, passes 400. Zero, zero. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, introduction of new policies. Now, the, the first one is policy. Did I forget? Oh nine. my God. I, I keep, there's, the, there's little baby check marks on my thing here. I don't know what's going well, on. That's because I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm all messed up. All right. Um, okay, uh, yes. Vote to amend effective date uh, for a minimum wage increase. I think we need, do we need Susan up? Right. Do we need Susan? Susan? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. So if you remember back in January, um, we voted, I put a memo forward that said minimum wage had increased to from 11 to $12 an hour, effective January 1. Um, initially, we voted to make that increase effective July 1st. We've since met as a budget subcommittee um, crunch some numbers and realize that I mean the right the right thing to do if we could if we could afford it would be to make it effective retroactive to January 1st so I've rewritten the memo to just make the change to the minimum wage to the $12 an hour retroactive to January 1st okay. and, uh, and I do want to thank uh, the bus monitors for bringing this to our attention too. I mean, just someone piped up I mean we're just an oversight and I'm just we're gonna make it right that's all um, any discussion I just have a question. Um, I should know the answer because I was there. But we, um, this, so minimum wage will rise again January 1st of 2020. So by using this language, we won't have to do this retroactively again. It will well, just change. Well, there's, there's two so things. Are you looking at the proposed policy? So it's two no, parts. I'm just looking at this. Oh, I am. Okay, this is different. This yeah. is okay. just yeah, this for is now, just for, right. and then okay. we've talked about a new policy regarding minimum wage, yeah, which will address it, it, what I'm saying. It's a great question because uh, yes. yeah, we need that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, that's what this is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, so, how should we word, how should we word this vote? Vote to amend the effective date for the minimum wage increase. Yeah. Say again. Vote to amend the effective date of the minimum wage change. Minimum wage increase. I'm just reading it off the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so. Okay. So I'll take this. I'll take it from here. I, I'm looking for a vote to increase minimum wage to twelve dollars an hour retroactive to January 1st, 2019 for we're in public schools. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, passes 400. Okay, now, a little check marks. Uh, introduction of new policies. Policy review committee membership, okay. I have to apologize. I actually put that on there in error. I, th I thought that, I mean, we, we've had this document.
document that we've been referring to, and it, I, I couldn't find it on the website. I thought it was just something we used and never formally accepted. Um, so I just wanted to formally accept it. I, I was perfect. I was actually fine with the way it was, but come to find out, I looked at I looked up the the, the, the one date that it was on there from 2013, and yeah, it was formally accepted then. We just, we just never reviewed it since. So I mean, it's on the agenda. We can d discuss it if you like, or I'd like to. Pr I'd prefer to just move along and have policy review, take a look at it at the next meeting. Okay. Everyone okay with that? I'm okay. Okay. Uh, next one is what you uh, segue to is the new policy on minimum wage. Um, I, I came up with what I'll discuss as I'll, I'll describe as a straw man proposal, and um, I'd like to get your guys' thoughts on it. The way the way we've we voted recently under Ms. Bakiaki was to um, introduce a new policy at a meeting and then vote on it at a subsequent meeting. So this is, I mean, feel free to poke holes in this or do whatever you want. But I do have a question for Ms. Ruiz. What is that in the top right, that GDA? Just the file. Where do you come up with that? It's based on an ASC file. Really? <laughs> OK. So I have a question. Sure. So a lot of our policies yeah. are based on Massachusetts law. So. Is there any law that addresses this? Well, no, that, I think it's in the policy. It mentions that, that our, our workers fall under municipal employees and they fall under the federal standard. So that this right. would say, regardless of federal or state, we're going to go with the higher, okay. you know, whichever it is. Okay. It would currently, Massachusetts, I think the federal minimum wage is like seven something dollars. Much lower right than that. crazy. 725 That's now. nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can, people can. That's can right can debate on whether or not $12 or $15 is too high, but, but if someone's going to be, you know, washing dishes and getting paid 15, you know, well, today, 12 bucks an hour, I'd like, I'd like our teachers to get paid, well, our substitutes and our bus monitors to get paid $12 an hour, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, so, I mean, I actually, does anyone, anyone else have any ask questions or comments? I actually saw an issue probably in my own proposal here. Um, The, do we have to, do, thanks. Do we have to make a distinction between hourly and salaried? Do you think? Between hourly and salary? Would anyone who this would affect be making a salary? Mm. I wouldn't think a salaried employee made less than, no. Well, we, we, have, we have time to think about it before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, would there ever be anyone under, under, you know, a non, well, non, I guess non-union, but would there ever be anyone under a regular contract that would be, you know, have less, that would work out to less than um, um, minimum. minimum wage? Or, for example, I mean, do we have to put anything in there that, let's, let's say people work, you know, more than eight hours, and, and if, you work, if you do the math, it comes out to less than minimum wage. Should we just make an exception in there to just make, to be sure there's just... I'm just thinking out loud. Well, I think you, so that was, so a substitute teacher, we, when we discussed this last year, they make, they don't make an amount per hour, they make an amount per day, right? So we adjusted that total based on how many hours. Yeah, you know, maybe what we should do is on a yearly basis, just break down the, like the substitute um, workers, what it would be for an hour, just so we make sure that we've maintained the level that we've set. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing this and, and then also requiring some kind of a review every year or something during the budget, you know, that mm -hmm. addresses minimum wage. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. So, so that, that this is just, like I said, just introducing the policy um, at the next meeting, it'll be on the agenda as a formal vote. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. Uh, school committee meet date, school committee meeting date scheduled for 2019-2020. Any discussion? Go ahead, Ms. Beck. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, so June 4th, I looked it up on the school calendar, June 5th is graduation. So it's the same issue actually we're going to have this year with that meeting that week. So June 4th is always the awards night at the high school. Mm. That Thursday oh, before right. graduation. So you'll be busy that night, Mike. 
<laughs> that will be senior um, awards night. So I don't know if we want to make a change now or wait and. Is that what an ice cream social is to Well, that's this year. This is next year. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. We had a, a meeting at the collaborative last night and um, they're doing the same thing. Um, and they had, a, they had a, a pretty spirited discussion on a Good Friday and which districts, you know, took it off and which districts didn't. And I wish I wrote them, wrote them mm -hmm. down, but. I don't know, Michelle, maybe you have a suggestion. Just we can always just put six o'clock like we're doing this time if you want to keep that date and just make it a short meeting like we're doing this time. Or um, you well, change it. We could, except they. I just heard this. I think yesterday in a meeting that they changed the awards time to six thirty, where it was seven before. So they're trying to make it earlier to make it easier for people to come. So now it's at six thirty instead of seven. Okay. Can't every school committee member go to awards night and call it a meeting? No, I can't. <laughs> um, well, we, I mean, I would be there anyway, yeah, but. Yeah. We could Just move it to June enough. 3rd, which would be a Wednesday. We'd have to change locations, but we could do that. Okay. Do we have to have the meeting? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We could take the meeting off, and then as we move through, if we need to schedule a meeting, we could always schedule a meeting. Okay. Because that's a busy time of year yeah, for yeah, everyone. Uh, Ms. Rossi? I have one more question. On um, November 5th, it says all day budget workshop. Is that um, required for all school committee members to attend? Or I, I'm just curious, because there's the, the MASC conference in Hyannis the next few days. Yeah. So I'm just. Uh, if it was something that was made, I just needed to know ahead of time no, if I, it's I would, something we need to do. I, I, I would say it's not not required, but, but, but expected, if that makes a difference. Okay. Well, <laughs> I can tell you I didn't go, so. Huh? <laughs> I didn't go the last time. Okay. I couldn't, so, I mean, you don't have to Yeah, go. That's, uh, that was my but question, is the, the, having yeah. the, you know, the full-time job part and taking yeah. off for the MASC conference. I'm just curious. It's yeah. also taped. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, um, I, I would just, I would add, can I just see someone's copy? I, 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 I'm fine with what you guys have been discussing, but I would just say for, for the recognition night, to have it written in there that it will take place at the middle school. <laughs> okay. Because we had originally had, had planned it for, you know, across the street, and that, that wouldn't have worked out too well. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, another question for the, the recognition night, just in case there is a, a, a full agenda like it was this evening. Um, would it be unreasonable if, it, if there are as many retirees or honorees as we had like th this night that we make it at 6 as opposed to 6.30, depending on the amount of honorees, so that the, the actual meeting could start closer to 7? Is that something that anyone has an opinion about? Or just because I, yeah. the honorees yeah. section was amazing. It was yeah. a wonderful thing to see how many dedicated employees we've had for so many years. And that, again, is a testament to our district that, they, that these teachers stay as long as, that, as they do. But in order to you know, make sure that we have the adequate time to recognize them and have them mingle and have you know, kind of a, a, a celebration, as it were, and, and instead of waiting until all of that dies down to keeping our meeting more in line with where we usually fall at 7, if we started it as a, if, if it so happens that we have that many honorees, something to look at as a, as a caveat that we might start it a half an hour earlier if there are that many? We, we usually, sometimes we have more. I think it's just uh, my fault, you know, for, for, for having such a huge agenda. I, I should have known better and, and cut it back. That's, that's easily done by whoever's chair at the time, yeah, which, uh, which I just live and learn, you know. <laughs> so, but, but I'm certainly, I, I'll, I'll entertain a motion if anyone wants to do that. Well, it would depend on how many people there were, so maybe we can yeah. wait until yeah. till then to find to see and I would say just keep the agenda light yeah that yeah. night yeah, yeah I, so I asked to have the evaluation but yeah. I didn't know it was going to be this <laughs> I did or that I was going to incite riot so I apologize for making that go on longer than I did right. <laughs> so so um, 
Ms. Ruiz, do you have all, everything we discussed? I mean, jotted down pretty much? June 4th, and we're putting the recognition at the middle school. Everything yes. else stays the same mm -hmm. at this point. And the time could be, we might look at the time. Yeah. Right, but I'm not putting that on the. It's not gonna change unless we need it to right. change. Yeah. All right, do I have a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Second it. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. all, right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 4 zero, zero. I don't have any. Oh, God. Yeah, but I didn't have a little copy here. There it is. The next item is report of the superintendent. Yes. First, I would ask that you approve the various bills and payroll with the addition of bill warrant on May 16th in the amount of $668.82 and $499,493.74 and bill warrant on May 23rd in the amount of $945.09. Payroll week May 4th in the amount of $148,900.99. I would ask that you approve the various bill warrants and payroll. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 4 zero, zero. Okay, thank you. There's a school uh, building meeting on Monday night for Minot. If you've driven by, you will see that it's now fenced, locked. And today when I drove by, the windows are covered and the doors are covered. So it, the abatement has started, which is quite exciting. and. We'll find out more details when we should expect the demolition to start. So that's going on now. The high school prom is May 18th. The promenade will be at the auditorium. It will begin at 530, and the prom will be at Rachel's Lake in Dartmouth from 7 to 11. May 14th, there's a PTA meeting at 630 in the middle school library. Um, I would remind everyone to please, please, please turn your bus forms in if you're going to be riding the bus next year. Today, there was an awards ceremony at the State House for uh, breakfast, school breakfast report, and Mrs. Siemens went. And if you could see this, we should get royalties because <laughs> Sue Johnson, one of our employees, is on the front oh, yeah. cover. Awesome. And <laughs> I don't think I'm going to see any royalties for the district, but it was a really nice tribute to our yeah. breakfast program. Um, when you're over at the high school the next time, the outdoor <laughs> eating area is in full swing now. They were they're still waiting for some tables to come mm -hmm. in, but kids have been able to go out, so that's very exciting. And uh, yesterday, our electric car arrived on site. And so we have a class next year at the high school. It will be a semester long course, and the students will be building an electric car. It comes in parts. We're going to drive it around, and then we'll <laughs> take it apart again, and it will start second semester. So we're really excited about that and can't wait to um, start showing you some of the um, really cool video with the kids putting it together. You can just see the kids now. Hey, Mr. Palladino, it's ready. Really, go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah. So thank you. Um, any, any questions or comments on the superintendent report? All right, moving on. A report of the school committee. Uh, first item, mask, day on the hill. Uh, Ms. Rossi. So on uh, May 1st, uh, Mike, myself, uh, Jeff Sweat, who's a lifetime MASC uh, member, four AP government students, uh, senior Noah DeMoranville, junior Bryce Fernandes, senior Emily Glidden, and junior Kyla Fulton all went to the State House to um, 
the MASC Day on the Hill. Um, there was a breakfast at the Masonic Lodge where we got to hear um, some speakers from uh, the MASC um, committee, the, the president, vice president, um, and various officers, as well as they had awards for Legislator of the Year, uh, who went to Senator Harriet Chandler of Worcester and Representative Aaron Vega from South Holyoke. Um, there were several guest speakers that talked about their backgrounds and how they got into school committees. Um, a large percentage, actually, of some of the representatives at the State House started on school committees in their respective districts. So I thought that that was um, a pretty interesting um, piece of information that so many of them had beginnings um, in their in their uh, political careers, starting you know in education and on school committees. Um, there was, oh, we also had um, guest speakers, uh, Representative Paul Tucker, who's the Vice Chair of the House Committee on Education, Senator Jason Lewis, who's the Chair of the Senate Committee on Education, and State Auditor Susan Bump, who's been the State Auditor since 2011, um, as well as questions from Stephen Finnegan, the um, MASC General Counsel. And there was an amazing lunch that followed that was catered by uh, all of the uh, area vocational schools. Um, including Upper Cape um, was on that list as well. Uh, a lot of the kids got to showcase their culinary skills and what they've learned and the food was really, really good. Uh, we got to go on um, a little meeting with Susan Gifford who gave us a tour of um, the, the house chamber um, as well as go out onto the, uh, the governor's veranda as, and oh, see um, the, the, the common from his, his porch so it was really really great the students seemed to enjoy themselves and it was it was very um, interesting to hear how many bills um, on the table currently there are three regarding education the promise act the governor's bill and senate tucker's uh, senator tucker's bill um, all regarding um, advances in in uh, education so it was definitely as a, as a new school committee member, it was very interesting to see so many seasoned school committee members from other towns. Um, I actually got to run into a school committee member from my hometown who was sitting at the, the table next to me. So it was definitely great to see so many people from all over the state come together um, to, to learn about what the, the state government is doing to help us um, fund our education. Uh, yeah, that was a great report. Thanks, April. That's um, summed it up really well. Uh, I really enjoyed being with the kids. That was uh, it was an experience. It was it was just it was just the right number. I was a little a little bummed at first. I thought it was like not not. I wish we had more, you know. But it actually worked out really good. Uh, we went into Susan Gifford's office and we we fit just right and we got some good pictures and they they were comfortable. She she made them comfortable. She she you know egged them on to finally loosen up and talk, you know. Um, I thought it was interesting. So, and, and, and you know, and Jeff, I mean, I really got to give him a lot of credit. He he he, he sets this thing up every year. But where he's not on the school committee anymore, he 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 thought it would be best to have current school committees go, school committee members go, and um, and we were supposed to we were trying to set up transportation, and and we couldn't get it. We couldn't. There was no available drivers. So he ended up driving, you know, and it and it was it was great. So so we we all went and. Um, <laughs> the students had to put up with the, with the banter between uh, Jeff Sweat and I about the electoral college system and tyranny of the minority or the majority, and uh, I hope they I hope they uh, they learned something out of it. Um, it, it, it another interesting thing: this Masonic Lodge. We we go down this building. Uh, Mr. Sweat dropped us off and he went to go park. We go down this building and you have to go down many floors, or a few floors, but there's no cell signal at all. <laughs> you know, but, um, they finally gave us a Wi-Fi password, but uh, that, that was interesting. Everybody didn't have any, any Wi-Fi for a while. Um, and then, the, 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 yeah, the, um, the tour was great by, Ms., by uh, Susan Gifford. She spent a, a while with us, actually, and her staff were great, too. Uh, we, normally, we would try to meet with Senator Pacheco as well, but he was uh, out of the district. He was, he, was, he was in the district while we were there in, in in Boston, um, and, and, and it, was, it was a good time. I'm definitely looking forward to it next year. Uh, any other questions or anything? Okay. Um, okay, Wareham School Committee slash Superintendent Operating Protocols. 
If you remember, this is the new policy we put in last year. It's been sent in your packet, and I come to find out as I was reading it, it, it needs to be reviewed every year. Uh, it should have been reviewed on, the, on our first meeting after the election, <coughs> so I'm getting to it now. And um, it, it, it is what it is. If, if you're comfortable signing it, sign it. Um, if you do, it's not binding, but, but it's just a personal decision. Um, anyone have any questions or comments? Do you have a new version, a new copy of it for us to sign? Is that okay? Uh, okay. This date okay. says 2018 to 19 on the yeah, one that you have for us yeah. to sign. The date's incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I still left that date just because we're still in 19 in the 18-19 school year. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. But if anybody... Yeah, it's like no vote. Just, just pass it around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lastly, educational services to students identified as homeless or unaccompanied youth. Um, this is the, the change for the policy, and it went before the, the policy subcommittee. It just hasn't been brought to the committee for approval, and it went before the policy subcommittee last year, and we're just asking for it to be approved. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in fa favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 4 0 0. Uh, any other business? No? I guess I'll just mention um, at the next school committee meeting, I'm going to be looking to um, uh, assign the committee assignments. And also, we'll be uh, working on the superintendent's mid, mid cycle evaluation. Okay. All right, I'll send the documents out for that. Okay. Uh, anything else? Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All those opposed? I mean, all those in favor, <laughs> please say <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> Fastest 400. Zero, zero. Meeting adjourned. Okay.